So let's talk about one slightly unlikely space ruin list that seems to be all over the top tournament tables and why it's looking so good in game right now. Hello and welcome back to All Specs Tactics, where today I thought it would be interesting to do a breakdown of a tournament list that really seems to have come into vogue over the past few weeks, a bit of flavour of the month to make Space Ruins a bit stronger than they are, with the average faction win rate being down at around about 41 or 42 percent. Given that it's just so unusual and tends to revolve around just a few key units working together, plus filling the gaps with strong Space Ruins stuff, I thought it would be interesting to talk about it, exactly what makes it strong, and then take a look at a whole clutch of different players that have managed to play it to good success in tournaments. The list itself is an Iron Storm Spearhead one, technically run with Dark Angels, though in my mind it sort of barely fits the definition. Literally the only Dark Angels things about most of these lists are Azrael plus a Land Speeder Dark Shroud, maybe not the hardest units to either land the models for or convert a suitable proxy to slot into a regular Space Marine army if you'd like to. I wouldn't really consider this a true Dark Angels list in the more fluffy sort of sense of the term. I know there are Codex Chapter and everything, the Tank Spearhead, Greenwing, Dark Angels just seems a little bit less common, say, compared with their Ravenwing and Deathwing, which they're known for. This Azrael and Ironstorm build first made a big splash, to my knowledge, at the Beachhead Brawl GT. Lots of people actually used a similar sort of pattern of list, with Dark Angels running a Storm Raven. Most of the time, the only Dark Angels units being Azrael and a Land Speed of Dark Shrouds to back it up. And then following multiple players placing highly at that event, it seems to have gone on to have great success at all manner of different tournaments, taking home three wins for the Dark Angels in 10th edition, and taking a look at stat check 40k, it looks like it's picked up a 62% win rate for that particular Dark Angels build at time of recording. That's far more than the Dark Angels average at around about 48-50%, to 50%, and a big flip round from Dark Angels having say about a 46% wins prior to the data slate. It really does seem that this is a quirky innovation in list building that seems to do the business, and people hadn't cottoned on to before. The Dark Angels Codex rules have only just really gone live with points costs and things, though it does look like these builds just really won't be affected by that. Asphale and the Dark Shroud remain the same points cost, and the only nerf that would affect these at all would be that Azrael is unable to lead company heroes anymore. They've locked him to be able to take Inner Circle companions instead annoyingly, though to my mind that's hardly the end of the world. You could just sub them out for Assault Intercessors or another Intercessor unit, or go higher investment with Stern Guard or Hellblasters or something. For a rough idea of the army list, here's one by Jay Seaborn, who used it to take second at the Beachhead Brawl, going undefeated against a field of 160 players, and there were several other Dark Angels Ironstorm builds in the X and 1 category. As we'll see in a second, there's multiple different ways to run this, but Azrael stands in pride of place as a combi weapon lieutenant with Master of Machine War, two tech marines with the good Ironstorm upgrades, and then perhaps the most striking difference to some normal Ironstorm builds is that you take a Land Speeder Dark Shroud, that helps keep all the vehicle creations safe, and a Storm Raven Gunship, this one with the multi welters Plasma Cannons and Hurricane Bolters, as a big scary attack threat piece to push out and destroy the enemy. Backing that all up, there's a bunch of objective securing units, and a big block of Stern Guard for Azrael to lead in this one. Then some classic Space Marine Ironstorm Godness, two Gladiator Lancers for anti-tank, two Redemptor Dreadnoughts with the Macro Plasmas, and a Storm Speeder Thunderstrike for a plus one to wound against vehicles and monsters. When I first saw these, I thought they were pretty interesting and unusual compared with previous builds, but it doesn't seem to be just a one event thing, they have gone on to big success later. Just to jump through the units and what they bring to the table, Azrael is the chapter master of the Dark Angels and fairly well known to be very good for the cost. 105 points for a character that farms a command point every turn, really nice for the Ironstorm stratagems, and then just good value beyond that. Fairly good melee, sustained hits warm for his unit, and a 4 plus invulnerable save from the Lion Helm. I feel like he's a character choice that's basically auto include if you are playing Dark Angels. If you have an army list, then it's likely that Azrael is going to make it better with those command points and just being a good synergy character. Perhaps more interesting and different is the Ravenwing Dark Shroud. This is the land speeder with a relic of old Caliban on the back, fast moving with a 14 inch move, 10 wounds at toughness 8 and a 5 plus invulnerable save, and packs either a heavy bolter or an assault cannon for a bit of fire support. The reason to include it though is the icon of old Caliban, this one gives you a 6 inch aura of both units having cover and the stealth ability, 
Generally quite a nice extra layer of durability to have sat in the middle of a formation, perhaps particularly vehicles, and maybe even more so for Storm Ravens. Basically any units that you did have are going to be tougher to gun down while this thing is nearby. Once it's done its job for a few turns, you could just use it as an annoying objective trading piece, moving quickly to do secondary objectives or contest primaries, or even make it nuisance charges to annoy and hold up the enemy when they're scrambling around for points late game. You do certainly trade off a bit of damage with this though. Its damage output is really quite bad versus investing in other things. It does mean it's not all one way. Finally for the three staples of the list is the Storm Raven gunship. This one does seem to be one of the more playable Space Marine flyers in the right army. 240 points and for that you get a hover flyer with a 20 inch move. 14 wounds at toughness 10 with a 3 plus save. But compared with most flyers in the game a little bit more durability than you might guess having a minus one damage. It gets to attack with a whole cluster of different weapon systems. A twin plasma cannon and twin multi-melter seems to be the fashion for the way to play the anti-tank guns. The plasma cannon is the heavy plasma cannon variant, so you get damage three on that, not just damage two. Then a couple of storm strike missile shots and a whole flurry of hurricane bolter attacks. That does mean that you come with really quite a lot of stack saves on any target due to those. It'll be 24 twin link shots within a 12 inch range. And that's certainly going to blow away enemy hordes. Then all of those units are fielded in the Ironstorm Spearhead, which brings a whole load to the table. Fairly godly vehicle support here. You get single rerolls whenever you're attacking. Really quite nice for hit or wound rolls on really high power weapons. And then loads of good stratagems and enhancements. Armor of Contempt is always relevant, particularly for vehicles with higher saves or getting cover. Things will usually be getting cover with that Dark Shroud about as well. Mercy's Weakness is the standout damage dealer. Sustained hits on a 5 plus for a vehicle versus an injured target is already great. Potentially you could be getting sustained and lethal hits as well. If you happen to have a Tet Marine with the target augury web nearby, there's a 1 command point for auto explode which can be situationally helpful and a 1 command point 1 to return fire when you're shot and reduced to below half strength on a vehicle unit. Tech Marines are kind of pivotal to maintain the vehicles and get them to hit on a 2+, plus. but as mentioned there's the one with the aura of lethal hits which is a pretty big damage buff. And the other two buffing ones that usually get played are Adept of the Omnisire to change a failed save to damage 0 each turn and Master of Machine War which allows you to advance and shoot or fall back and shoot extra mobility near the bearer of that and some nice insurance as to vehicles getting locked up in combat and then you losing a whole load of flexibility. Putting that all together, as Rails maybe not as integral but certainly does his thing, he brings his extra command point to the table to allow you to use as many of those great stratagems as possible. He can sit with a durable unit somewhere with the invulnerable save, maybe stay safe for a couple of turns and then quest out into the midfield to fight for objectives in the closing turns. The Dark Shroud can give a lot of durability to exposed vehicles, the minus one to hit and perma cover is great for the Storm Raven if it's being aggressive. Between that, the minus one damage and maybe armor of contempt stacked on top of it as well. And you've created a unit that rather than just being easy to destroy for most enemy units, is generally going to be really quite tough to shift for quite a lot of things. You need weapons with very good strength, very good AP, ideally aren't damaged too. And even then you'll be minus one damage and minus one to hit. Should be enough insurance that most of the time an exposed Storm Raven can't just get shot off the table turn 1 if you go second as well. There's certainly no bad thing to have minus 1 to hit for a bunch of Redemptor Dreadnoughts, which might also be able to be a bit more creative with their positioning if they don't have to hug cover. Finally, the Storm Raven is a vehicle that's kind of rarely played outside of Iron Storm Spearhead, but does seem to be doing the business here. As a 240 point unit covered in guns with good mobility, it's definitely something that's worth fearing. You get very good firepower with Mercy's weakness if you can trigger it on something meaningful. It also seems very scary with the return fire stratagem as well. I feel like most of the time you're not going to reduce it all the way down from above half health straight down to being destroyed before you get the chance to trigger the return fire one. And I feel like quite a bit of the time that might be the chance just to pick up an enemy unit if you roll well. And even if it does go down, if you're using Armour of Contempt and it's within range of the Dark Shroud, your opponent's likely expended a lot of firepower to make that the case and won't have anywhere near as much as they'd like for your other armoured targets. In the right circumstances, if you're playing with it incredibly aggressively, maybe on a later turn, then it could even be a good chance to use the Auto Explode stratagem. An aura of automatic D6 mortal wounds on the Deadly Demise could be absolutely game-changing. 
perhaps even to the point where it might be worth an injured Storm Raven moving out and then perhaps charging something to absolutely maximise that. If you get the opportunity to do something like 4d6 or 5d6 mortal wounds onto the enemy army, then that could be potentially game winning then and there. I must admit it is kind of cool to see a couple of perhaps slightly lesser used units like the Dark Shroud and the Storm Raven supporting each other to achieve great things. And it's interesting to see what other people have chosen to make of the build. It looks like there's various different ways in which you can support it. This one's the single biggest tournament that anyone's managed to win with it. This list by Kit Smith Hanna took first at Clutch City GT. And the differences for this one is that there's not one but two Storm Ravens on the table, just in case one of those things wasn't enough. I feel like you're going to have to take down at least one of those things pretty quickly, otherwise you're not going to have too much army left. For this one, the Talon Master gets the Master of Machine War, meaning that you can have that a bit more mobile. I suppose that could be used to keep up with the Storm Ravens potentially, though I don't really know exactly how it was played. Azrael gets Company Heroes in this one. I guess you'd have to sub that out for something different, though it probably wouldn't be the end of the world. And besides that, the rest of the Iron Storm is made up of three Redemptor Dreadnoughts with Plasmas, and the Storm Speed of Thunderstrike for a plus one to wound on enemy vehicles. That could be nice with the multi melters and the plasma cannons from the Storm Ravens. And a cheap unit of Inquisitorial henchmen, likely for either secondary work or holding primary objectives for super cheap if they're hidden. Here's another really strong performance for the army list. This one was run by Benjamin Rubenstein, who used it to take ninth at Cherokee Open. Only one defeat, I believe, on the last of the six games. The biggest difference for this one is that there's only the one Redemptor Dreadnought and otherwise there's a mighty three Repulsor Executioners, one with Macro Plasma and two with Laser Destroyers, so you're just overflowing with vehicles to use those scary Iron Storm stratagems on there. Otherwise Master of Machine War goes on a Phobos Librarian with some Infiltrators I suppose, that would provide some Deep Strike Denial and you wouldn't be able to shoot that dead. Otherwise there's a Redemptor Dreadnought, no Storm Speed of Thunderstrike in this one, and otherwise, for objective support, there's a bit more units on the table, some Inceptors, a Calidus Assassin, two units of Scouts, and Azrael's with some Assault Intercessors, as well as the other two Tech Marines. Finally, I also noticed that this one had gone 5-0 and taken down a small 20-player tournament, this one run by Danny Everson at Carnage Immortalis. This one's definitely using a fair few similar things to the previous couple of lists, this time two Repulsor Executioners, one Plasma and one Laser Destroyer. One Redemptor Dreadnought and a Thunderstrike, and then a fairly good number of support type units, Azrael with Company Heroes, Jump Intercessors, Infiltrators, two sets of Scouts, and a Phobos Librarian with the Infiltrators, though he's not bearing Master of Machine War this time, it's given to a Tech Marine. Overall I do find it kind of surprising that all you need is Azrael and a Landspeed of Dark Shroud to have one of the best ways to play Iron Storm Spearhead for the Dark Angels. This is just sort of fun to see this having so much success, and perhaps even more so than the Black Templars Iron Storm, despite their very cheap multi-melters that they can bolt on some fun vehicles. It's a bit of a weird thing for Dark Angels players, I must admit. Doesn't really feel like as much of a Dark Angels list versus an Iron Storm list plus Azrael. Hopefully with next balance passes, Games Workshop might be able to make some of the more standard Dark Angels units a little bit more tempting. In any case though, look forward to hearing your thoughts as to whether you've played this or seen it in action at all. What are your thoughts on Dark Angel's Iron Storm? If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, or certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming. I do tend to post new ones just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep these coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.